Hello, my name is Christina and I make historical clothing. And today I want to talk to you about um, 18th century caps. I primarily focus on styles that would have been worn during the American Revolutionary War because that's mainly what I use them for. Um, there are a lot of great patterns and tutorials I've seen out there, but I just thought I would uh, show you my take, um, let you know my experience with some of the patterns and with sewing some caps myself. So to get started, the first um, pattern I ever used was this one, uh, Canix Corner. There is a large variety of caps in this one. The main one that I ended up doing was uh, this View A uh, round eared cap. Um, I found though that <laughs> the large version was too large and the small version was too small. So I kind of made a pattern that was in between those that is the main one I use. And this is the first one that I created. Put on a cute little head here. <laughs> and I made this one out of linen and I actually did a whipped gather around the edge here. We'll be talking about what that is. And then I pleated it, which they said was um, a historically accurate way to do things. And this is primarily the style that I will be showing you in the tutorial. The next pattern that I tried was the 1770s Dormouse a French nightcap by J.P. Ryan, and this was um, a pretty good pattern. It was, it's a little bit puffy for me. <laughs> I don't think I've actually worn it myself, but I've loaned it out a lot because it's beautiful. It makes a beautiful fluffy cap. The, um, the crown here is just a giant circle, so that's what gives you the puff, and I'll show you a version that, a uh, pattern that I made uh, that's similar, but here we have these large uh, crescents here, and then we just have frills all over the place. And this one is made out of silk organza, so uh, it's it's see-through. If you have a beautiful hairstyle on um, that you've had done, it will show through a cap like this. Definitely not for wearing when you just want to throw your hair up <laughs> and get on with your day. This will show, but it's beautiful. Uh, let's see, the next one I made was this girl right here. And this one is made out of the sheerest cotton I could find. And it is slightly smaller than the first one that I made based on the Canix corner pattern. And it's pretty much the pattern that I'll be showing you. Um, yep, just made it a little bit smaller and it's got a little drawstring in the back so you can tighten it or loosen it. And we've got a cute little bow on here. And I added this, these little lacy frilly uh, lappets just for a little something extra. The most recent cap I made was actually for uh, portraying Abigail Adams. And um, she has a, a portrait where um, she has a cute little bow in the back of her hair, a little pink bow, and um, I knew I would need a cap that covered my hair, so I decided to make a very small frilly cap with a little pink bow in the back. But as you can see, this one, this one is quite tiny, and instead of having the fabric up here, I just used lace that I pleated in place. It's really beautiful uh, cotton lace. And then this, this particular ribbon is actually made out of silk taffeta and then hemmed. So that's another option if you um, uh, want a little more flexibility in the width and color of ribbon that you use. So those are the four caps I've made thus far. Um, a note about when you're choosing a cap for yourself is you also want to be mindful of the hairstyle that you will be wearing of very high <laughs> fancy hair. You may want a larger cap or maybe a smaller one to just perch on top. But let's see, this is a great book right here, um, 18th Century Beauty, The American Duchess Guide. And it is full of tips on how to do your hair. Um, and as someone who's done hair like this several times, I can say this has some really great advice. The main thing is you need practice. You just got to practice um, and then you can you can get better at doing these styles. This book also has some fantastic uh, caps, patterns and tutorials in there. And you can, of course, refer to those as well. All right. So
So uh, what we're going to cover in the tutorial, and I think I'll break this up into parts so each one doesn't get too long, but we'll go over fabric, um, the different kinds where I've gotten mine, um, and then I'm going to show you the sewing, uh, the stitches that I use, and I have kind of a unique, unique way of doing some of them I want to share with you, um, and then also the trimming and um, how I do that. And I'm going to share with you tons of tips and tricks. So that's what that's what I'm the most excited about. Um, I think that's it for now. Let's get started. There are so many different styles of caps during this time. Um, and my goal today is to give you the basics of um, what the shapes would look like that make them up and give you ideas for how to trim them. As you can see here, I mean, it's really the trimming that stands out on these caps. Um, the back part is going to be a very simple shape, you'll see. But um, yes, have fun, do tons of research, um, find pictures of what you want, and um, hopefully I can show you how to make it happen. There are three main fabrics that you will probably be choosing to make your cap out of. And the most common one is linen. Um, this linen here, it's wonderful. It's so pure white. So I actually got this one from fabricstore.com. There's a hyphen in there, fabric-store.com. And they have a handkerchief weight, 3.5 ounces. And I get the optically whitened and it's just so beautiful. Um, definitely pre-wash it and um, you'll, you'll notice it comes out a little wrinkly, especially with linen. I found what helps is if you just spray it with a little bit of um, water that has a little bit of vinegar in it, that will help uh, smooth them out. And another thing I did right here I wanted to show you, I sprayed it with some spray starch. So this is what I use. Spray starch. I think it was recommended by someone who actually um, works with silk and they said you could use this on it. It works on all kinds of fabrics and that was let's see linen press portfolio it smells wonderful that can also make it easier to work with because linen can be a little bit wiggly sometimes the next most common fabric i think would be a cotton wall and i just love these caps that are made out of very sheer uh white cotton and this one Look at that, it's very, very sheer. This one I got from a Dharma Trading Company and it's just their cotton wall. They have other varieties combed uh, cotton wall. That one's nice. And they have a silky one, which I, I don't like quite as much. Um, this one seems more natural looking and I think it's what I made this cap out of. It's very sheer and delicate. This one I made out of something else, but a similar fabric. And I just, I love how the ruffles lay on a very, very sheer cotton. They're very, very beautiful. The last fabric I want to talk about is silk organza, and it's just, oh, so fluffy and heavenly. If you want to make a fancy cap, that's just perfect for it. Look at these tiny little things you can do, tiny little rolled hems, self puffs. Um, I believe I got this fabric it may have been from Dharma Trading also. There are tons of other places where you can get great fabric. Um, I usually check a Burnley and Trowbridge first, um, and then I'll check a Renaissance Fabrics, sometimes William Booth Draper. I know Zadie Grossman also sells uh, great fabrics for your all your historical needs. Um, but yeah, those are the three fabrics. So uh, pick one that suits you best. This is the basic pattern that I use for the cap I was showing you earlier. This, this linen one here. And this is a great cap for if you haven't done your hair in the morning, you can just kind of toss it on um, and it will cover everything pretty good. Um, I drew these out on Christmas paper, actually. I do all my patterns like that um, so that you can see. I wanted you to be able to see the lines here in case you want to you can actually draw your own off of this. I don't mind. I I created this this pattern based on others, um, and found that this is this is what worked for me. And you can measure from here to here, and you can tell how far around your head that it's going to go. And you can maybe adjust that if you want um, it smaller. This is one inch, so um, 
again, you can draw this. And Christmas paper is fantastic. You can just draw this out. And I also have all the instructions on here for what we're going to be doing, how we're going to be treating the different edges. And we're going to be cutting out just one, just one of this and then just two of these because the caps are single layer. So in the band across the top, there's just going to be one layer uh, with all of the um, edges rolled in. This over here <laughs> is, it looks like a funny ruffle piece, but what that is is because I don't usually um, decide on that until uh, maybe the end or when I'm designing it. I like it to be different every time. So as you can see, I like my ruffles maybe about three inches wide, narrow it down to about an inch, um, and then I usually just measure around here um, about two times depending on what, if you want it um, very, very roughly, <laughs> you could do it more, maybe three times. Um, but um, I don't really have a pattern for that because that's going to differ based on on uh, how you want to trim it. So um, this is one that I call the call style. And uh, next I will show you a different style. This pattern is adapted from the Dormouse style cap. I don't remember exactly what their crown was, but this is kind of um, just a small puff crown. And the difference between the call style and this one is this one has these little, these little crescents instead that come down really cute <laughs> on your face, you can put ruffles on them or you can just, um, you can just finish them off, have them be plain. Um, the crown here, I think this is a very modest size. Actually, if you want a big giant puffy one, make it bigger and <laughs> go for it. Do go big or go home. Right. And, and then you can't in the dormouse pattern that I use, they actually had it all the way and they just, I, mean, I wasn't really sure how you're supposed to treat it. They just kind of folded it in and attached it. But I, I kind of like the idea of doing a casing. Um, I have it drawn straight across here. You could do this one uh, with the circle if you can. And I'm not going to be making this style today. I just wanted to uh, show it to you as an option. Always make a mock-up first, of course, see what works for you. Um, play around with the styles and uh, find something that fits you perfect. Here I have cut my pieces out of the linen. And a couple things to remember when you're cutting your pieces out, um, especially along down here, we have a straight edge. Um, also along this, this head piece, we have a straight edge. And then the ruffle, I've already sewn that, <laughs> but we have a straight edge on one of those as well. And I definitely recommend um, pulling a thread to get that really, really straight. You can see down here, kind of, you should be able to pull pull a thread off when you're done but you just you get your pin and you like if you're gonna do it and you just maybe I'll do it down here to show you you get one little piece of thread this is not gonna turn into a cap so you'll see me do all kinds of weird things <laughs> to this and this is just a demo for you guys so so you can just kind of follow it like that. Sometimes if you pull it just enough, you can see where you then need to cut. And then once you get there, you can pull more or you can be diligent and pull all the way across. Your thread will break a lot. You're not doing anything wrong. That's just kind of how it is. Usually um, the linen thread will break and you just got to keep going. So definitely do that. Pull a thread. And your edges where you pull the thread will probably stay pretty nice. You can see there's pretty nice. I cut these out a little while ago and they still look good, but you'll notice like up here on your, on your curved edges, they'll start to fray. And when we go to do some of the very delicate sewing, those <laughs> will stick out funny and we don't want that. So something I recommend is using, um, fray check. You can also use fray block and I just, I cut them all my pieces and then I just sitting in front of the TV and I'm going around here doing just a tiny bit of fray check. I already did it on this piece. That's why this one looks pretty good. And this one does not because I did not do it on here. So that's what will happen if you don't do it. <laughs> I wanted to share a fun story. I actually did a um, workshop a few years ago on making caps and we had a lot of people cutting these pieces out and needing to fray check. And so um, one of the girls, it was brilliant. She just <laughs> squirted it out on, I don't know, a piece of foil or something. It took 
took everyone's pieces and just went like doink like that in the free check um so i guess if you're in a big rush and you're doing a bunch you could try it although um, if you get too much on the edge it will make it difficult to do the rolled hem that we're gonna do um, but i just thought i'd, I'd throw that out there you could you know put it put it in a line and do that whatever works for you i love it when people experiment so uh yeah try new things if you don't want to use fray check because um that's not accurate maybe you're trying to be super accurate or maybe you're making this for people can see um you're definitely going to want to just trim all these little edges right before you sew them um i kind of wonder if if that's what they did if maybe they had it marked and then you could even just kind of cut it out as you go um, otherwise you're just going to trim these little edges so i'm going to do that i'm going to prep this piece and then we're going to move on to the next part which is going to be uh, learning some stitches <laughs> see you then